Our wee blue planet, a pale dot in the dark, infinite universe. Our Earth, our only home. But that home is under threat. Unless we move from being polluters of our planet to its protectors, the risks to billions of people and untold habitats could be catastrophic. 2015 is the year the world needs to act together. And perhaps this small country in Northern Europe can show us a way forward. This is Scotland. And this is our climate action story. For decades, Scotland was famous for its coal, its steel and its ships. This heavy industry brought wealth from the four corners of the earth. Scotland's changed. Now we're a modern consumer society. We're one of the world's richest countries. But our wealth has come at a price. Our climate emissions, past and present, contribute to a global problem. And it's the poorest people in the world that are suffering most. But Scotland is facing up to its responsibilities. In 2009, the Scottish Parliament passed the Climate Change Act. It pledges Scotland to legally binding emission reduction targets and is believed to be the strongest climate change legislation in the world. I think a lot of people can be cynical about politics, but this is a remarkable piece of legislation. Tens of thousands of people across Scotland contacted their politicians and called for them to take more action on climate change. The Scottish Climate Change Act puts Scotland ahead of any other country in terms of commitments to reduce carbon emissions. So what has Scotland signed up to? By 2020, the legal target is to reduce emissions by at least 42% from 1990 levels, and then by at least 80% by 2050. Crucially, the Act was supported by every political party in the Scottish Parliament. All parties agree on this. I think Conservatives have sometimes been thought not to be keen on the environment, but we are. The environment's very important to us, it's important to all mankind. And uh, I, I, we felt very strongly that we should be supporting legislation like this. The targets weren't only welcomed by politicians and campaigners, but by business too. I think that Scotland's climate change legislation has really prompted a lot of activity uh, within the business community in Scotland and I think that's a lesson that others can observe and see. Um, partly this is through our 2020 climate change group, partly it's within individual businesses and firms around the country because we all know we have a legislated, a statutory requirement. We have to do something, we have to change um, certain things in our business, how we procure, how we run ourselves, how we think about uh, climate issues, and we have a deadline for doing that. Agriculture accounts for over 20% of Scotland's emissions, but Scottish farmers also back the act. We've been a climate change focus farm for the last three years. This field here has been soil mapped. It's about applying nutrients to where the nutrients are needed. So for example, we're using a lot less fuel, which is uh, good for the farmer's pocket, uh, helps his, pro his profitability, and it is very good for the environment and climate change as a whole. The Scottish Government has also set a target of producing 100% of Scotland's electricity needs from renewable sources by 2020. The growth of Scotland's renewable energy sector has been an undoubted success. The sector's doubled in the last six or seven years. We now generate twice as much electricity as we did six or seven years ago, to the extent that the renewable energy sector in Scotland now generates uh, around the equivalent of half of all the power consumed by every home and every business in the country. And as a result, that clean electricity generation is displacing the equivalent of all the carbon emissions from Scotland's transport sector. But as well as businesses, Scotland is empowering its people to take local action too. The Climate Challenge Fund helps communities move towards low carbon living. We had the solar panels installed and we had to start thinking about how could we use that energy. 
we're a bit of sort of research, we found out that the, most teams were using a commercial kit wash that involved a 40 mile round trip. We approached Climate Challenge Fund, who funded us for the machines, and we were able to totally cut out all those miles connected with laundering. And all along, Scotland's civil society organisations are keeping the pressure on to make sure the targets become a reality. Scotland has a great story to tell in terms of climate action, but it's imperative that our targets are realised. What this means is that Scotland needs to reduce emissions year on year and show that we can improve people's lives at the same time. But as well as cutting emissions at home, Scotland has a moral duty to help those affected by climate change right now. The Scottish Government is funding projects like this one in Tanzania to help the world's poorest nations adapt their lives to the changing weather. And through the small but innovative Climate Justice Fund, it's now helping people in Malawi and Zambia too. United Nations figures show that in the least developed countries there's been a five-fold increase since the 1970s in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events. Women are suffering disproportionately, since they are often the main providers of food, fuel, water. The most vulnerable are worst affected, the very young, the very old, the ill and the very poor. The scale of the injustice is massive. The individuals, communities and nations which are suffering most from climate change are those who have done least to cause it. Climate justice recognising this fact, it requires that the developed nations face up to their responsibilities. World leading targets agreed by consensus in Parliament. Opportunities for a new low carbon economy welcomed by business. Delivery of climate targets held to account by a strong civil society. Scotland's ambition could help to show others the way. Other developed countries must commit to emissions targets in line with climate science. In 2015, with political leadership from nations across the world, we can agree strong, binding targets to cut our global carbon emissions. We can move towards a new, clean, green economy. And we can protect our homes, our environment, and the planet's most vulnerable people. We can protect the Earth, our only home, our wee blue planet.